I eat death and rape threats for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, sometimes for snacks. I mean, the, the, the threats uh, are escalating. So, uh, there's threats to my security, um, uh, of course, to my family, and of course, uh, the members of Karapatan and the communities that we work with. And thank you for listening to our first episode of Not a Target, a podcast by Viva Salud. Viva Salud is a Belgian NGO partnering with social movements in the Philippines, Palestine, and the DRC, and remain in close cooperation with the People Health Movement. All over the world, health activists, workers, and organizations are being repressed. They have become the targets of intimidations, unjustified arrests, smear campaigns, and sometimes even get murdered. Our health depends on their safety, so let's stand up for them. In this podcast, we talk to health workers and activists from different parts of the world about the challenges they face, the extraordinary energy they put into their work, and the tremendous power of activism and international solidarity. Welcome in Not a Target. In this first episode, we will talk about the repressive situation health workers and activists are living in the Philippines. Since the profit and the privatization of the health sector in the Philippines has increased, price for health care have exploded and the number of public health workers has decreased. A resistance of health care workers has been organized, demanding more resources and more rights. Then the government has criminalized them, putting some of those workers on a terrorist list in order to silence them. Catherine Berza, development worker at the Council for Health and Development since 2007, explains how important is the community health worker and to what extent they don't just provide health cares, but also create awareness among the entire community. Uh, it is very important for us to not just only focus on issues inside the hospitals, and in clinics, but more importantly on issues at the community level. That's why in CHD and our partner organizations, the Alliance of Health Workers, Health Alliance for Democracy, and, and the others, we involve ourselves with other socioeconomic issues that affect uh, the daily lives of the Filipinos, such as the increasing prices of commodities in the Philippines, repression, political repression, arrests to activists and non-activists as well. Because for us, we see this all as contributory to the health situation of the people. Um, for example, because of the extrajudicial killings, the security aspect in the Philippines, uh, the illegal arrests happening, for example, to Dr. Sanselan, to, Doc to Sarah, to Dr. Castro, if we are not involved in the issue of extrajudicial killings and illegal arrest, how can we encourage more doctors, nurses, medical students to go to the countrysides and serve where they, are, where they are needed most if the government cannot guarantee their safety? And so we have to resist this uh, repression in order to encourage more uh, health workers to serve in rural and urban poor communities. But first, uh, we have to dissipate the climate of fear. So that's why it is important for us to be involved in other issues because they are, these are all uh, interconnected. The Philippine health system is chronically ill. Most of its population has no or limited access to quality health care services. The national budget for health has remained inadequate to straighten the country's weak public health system. Only 50% of Filipinos have access to a rural health center within 30 minutes of travel, and only 13% of healthcare providers are in rural areas. Over a third of Filipinos continue to die unattended by a medical professional. The realities in the Philippine health system uh, has been very stark. Um, there's only one doctor per 33,000 Filipinos, which is a lot because the, the World Health Organization prescribes that for the health system to be uh, in a good place, there should at least be one doctor per 1,000. So that's, uh, it's 33-fold in the reality of the Philippines. 
and majority of Filipinos do not have access to essential medicines. It's either they cannot afford to buy the medicines, which is the case for uh, for millions of Filipinos, or uh, these essential medicines are not available in their communities. So um, because of this, a lot of Filipinos are dying of uh, preventable and curable diseases, which at, at this day and age, uh, like tuberculosis should not be anymore a big thing. But because of the uh, realities in the Philippine healthcare setting, a lot of Filipinos still die of tuberculosis, which has been eradicated in many countries already. It is within this context that many healthcare providers have come out to speak about the poor states of the public health system, calling out the government for its failure to protect and promote the people's right to health. They have carried out health campaigns and advocacies, lobbied with states, authorities, and built networks and alliances to influence policy development. That's all about being activists and the reason why Catherine continued to fight. There should always be someone or a movement that challenges the current narrative from the mainstream media, from the government. There, There is always uh, two sides of the coin. And the... Uh, in the Philippine setting, um, what the government uh, shares to the public is, you know, contrary or far from reality. So the role of health activism in the health movement is very important because uh, we challenge the current narrative, the current statistics based on what we see in the communities from, uh, from the interviews that we conduct. This will help engage the public to question the existing statistics and at the end of the day we all want a uh, better health for the Filipino people so um, if it has to question the current situation of the health uh, system we do that what is important is that it is always based on facts it is always evidence to show and then from there we clamor for change because we want to improve the health system and we want everyone to have access to the right to health. Therefore, to counterbalance the official and biased speech from the governments, evidences and facts from the field truly really matters. According to her, every health worker in the Philippines should be a health activist. We cannot just be doing what we do inside the hospitals or communities. Uh, we should always, we should also be uh, analytical and critical of the existing situation not only to you know uh, be in contradiction with the current narrative but we have to be advocates of the people's rights and our patients uh, so i think yes health workers uh, it is very important in this time and age to also be health activists unfortunately Health workers who are on the front lines of the struggle for the right to health are facing state repression. In the Philippines, violence against progressive doctors and health workers is increasing, dramatically resulting to several deaths. Many health workers are confronted with different forms of harassment, such as red tagging, feeling of trumped up charges, vilification, illegal arrests, and detention. Christina Palabai, Secretary General of Philippines Human Rights Organization Carapatan, who is also a close partner of Viva Salud, explains us what kind of human rights violations health workers are facing in the Philippines. I'm Christina Palabay, uh, the Secretary General of Carapatan, but I also consider myself as a women's rights and an LGBTQ activist. More specifically, she points out the red tagging, a common practice in the Philippines where everyone can be easily confined to the level of terrorists. People um, get tagged if they are supporters or members uh, or officers of the Communist Party of the Philippines or the New People's Army. I mean, if it's just labeling or name calling. Uh, first and foremost, of course, it, for many of those who experience red tagging, it was not true. The range of people being red tagged is really uh, has really spiraled, no? From showbiz 
personalities. Imagine even beauty queens, no? People who won like beauty contests outside the country to um priests, to journalists, no? People who may have no connection at all, no, to any progressive belief or cause outside of the fact that they have expressed political dissent or disagreement with the government on its policy on 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 the policies you get red tag a common strategy lent by the former and current government to control human rights activists and more generally people whose opinion might impact the daily governmental narrative a common strategy which can attempt to silence dissident voices provoking daily unhealthy mental charges and often lead to illegitimate detentions and sometimes even to death the next sentence uh in every threat when you're red tag is that this this person should be killed this person this person uh, should not exist this person is not human this person is a terrorist so the threat that comes along you know when you're tag that's the danger that is why even the un special rapporteur on human rights defenders uh mary lawlor called red tagging as a context specific death threat frankly for the past um what six to seven years no it has been really difficult because i how i described it i eat death and rape threats for breakfast lunch and dinner sometimes for snacks i mean the the, the threats are escalating uh there's threats to my security of course to my family and of course uh the members of Karapatan and the communities that we work with At the same time i have faced i'm i'm currently still facing a malicious uh trumped up charge by uh, filed by the former national security adviser uh which if convicted uh will result to six years at least six years of imprisonment that's a very concerning issue because um uh it shows that judicial harassment is being widely still promoted to in an attempt to silence us criminalized through the use of the anti-terrorism law activists and health workers are also closely monitored those who are red tagged uh being killed being arrested get trumped up charges like many of my colleagues in Karapatan and many health workers uh, working in several communities in the Philippines at the same time there are also several forms of threats in using the anti-terrorism law you know, against us in the past years there have been increased uh, monitoring and surveillance of our bank accounts of of our dealings and the uh, relationships outside the Philippines including with Viva Salud huh? even our interaction and engagements at the UN huh? which in the first place is an exercise of our right as a human rights organization to publicly inform uh several stakeholders on the human rights situation in the Philippines uh, and even inside the UN My god, even inside the UN, the Human Rights Council, we face red tagging. So there's no what should they call it? Not an ounce of diplomacy <laughs> exists when it comes to the Philippine government because even inside the UN, we get threatened. But that only shows that um uh, there are several attempts to silence me, silence Karapatan, but also i think it's an indirect recognition our work matters in the first place an organization that doesn't want to exist we don't want karapatan to exist no? because if karapatan exists then that means there are human rights violations right but as long as we're here we'll we'll fight it out no we'll fight it out not for ourselves but for the communities that we serve as it happened for the most prominent journalist of the philippines maria ressa who has been accused several times of frauds, tax evasions, and has been arrested twice, trumped up charges remain a common way for the Filipino government to silence and condemn human rights workers. Basically, it means that military and police are routinely manufacturing evidences. Then, based on fake evidences, half of the political prisoners are, according to Christina, illegitimately put in jail because falsely accused. Well, it's not really a new tactic, but they have been using it especially after 9/11. You know, the practice of criminalizing 
uh, the work of uh, uh, human rights defenders, social movements, and revolutionary movements. You know? They wanted to pay these uh, people and actors and communities as terrorists, as criminals. So what they do is file criminal charges instead of political charges like of rebellion. They file charges of murder, arson, robbery, all the criminal stuff <laughs> that, uh, that can be thought of under the revised penal code. And uh, they do it in various ways. The first more stark uh, way that they do it is planting of evidence. They raid people's homes using search warrants, questionable search warrants. No? They have some, or they, they contract, they hire witnesses. Some random guy, just any random person. You know? And they coerce them and they pay them to say uh, that, hey, uh, this Christina Palabay, I saw that she's selling this gun. And uh, we think that she's a gun runner and she's part of a gun syndicate. Uh, that testimony, those false testimonies, would uh, be used by the police to file for search warrants. And that gives them the legal instrument to conduct searches inside your homes and offices. While conducting these uh, searches and um, raids, they plant evidence. Guns, um, ammunition, grenades. Imagine uh, the office of Biba Salud being raided you know, and they plant what bazookas mean maybe <laughs> whatever guns uh, on top of the drawers or inside the ano, the cabinet say that okay these are yours that's it you'll put you'll be put in jail for non bailable criminal offenses so uh, almost uh, 50% of the 800 political prisoners right now are charged that offense, illegal possession of firearms and explosives. What Christina testimony say is that health workers and activists are at risk in the Philippines. Every day they are concerned about their own security, but also the security of their family and community. Christina, as well as Catherine, both turned as terrorist sympathizer and therefore became walking targets. A hard repression from which some of their previous colleagues have experienced, such as Dr. Nati Castro, working with the Lumad people, a native community in Mindanao. She has been red tagged by the government for several decades because uh, they questioned her motives in staying in the poor communities as a doctor. Because as a doctor, you are expected to, you know, um, become rich profession, work in the cities or grow abroad or specialize, etc. But a doctor staying in the Lumad uh, communities, the poor communities, that is uh, out of the box. So because she decided to stay there and endured decades of uh, red tagging, she asserted her right to serve and uh, worked with the people in asserting their right to health. Um, when she visited her family in 2022 in February in Metro Manila, she was uh, faced with trumped up charges of, I think, murder or kidnapping. Of course, as the country suffers from an acute shortage of health workers, the violence inflicted on them has resulted in further deprivation of medical and health services to the people. A vicious cycle of privatization, shortages and repression has then been established. In the recent uh, State of the Nation address of uh, President Marcos Jr., we heard that he wants to encourage more investors in health. We are afraid that um, by getting more investors, it would lead to the worsening of the privatized system. Because uh, when you open up the public health care to the business sectors, of course, they would expect a, a return of profit. No? At, at whose expense? For sure, it will be at the expense of the patients who are um, seeking treatment in public hospitals. No? Uh, because... Um, Currently, the number of uh, private hospitals is double the number of public hospitals in the Philippines. Um, and there will be, for sure, there will be a lot of layoffs. Uh, a lot of health workers would be removed, 
contractualization would be more prevalent, our experience in the previous administrations. And when the health workers, when the public speak up against these uh, policies in the public health care, for sure the government uh, will, will again tag them as members of the terrorist organization. So it's like um, a cycle. Uh, the situation of the privatization, there will be a, a difficult situation for the patients and health workers because of rising costs and public health care um, being privatized. And when you speak against it, the state will employ uh, repressive measures. It will bust unions. Uh, admin, hospital administrations will reprimand the health workers. And when, when you assert your rights, the state will tag you as terrorist. So it, it, it is an ugly cycle. Before the end of 2021, at least 427 human rights defenders and health workers have been killed, including Dr. Mary Rose Sonselan and Zara Alvarez, who both dedicated their lives to serve the poor and marginalized communities on the island of Negros. The people of Negros have witnessed violence inflicted on rights defenders, including health workers, farmers, church people, lawyers, teachers, and even government officials. Our previous colleagues have experienced uh, with the experience of Dr. Rose Sanselan, a rural community health doctor in Negros, and our dear friend Zara, who is a community-based health program staff of the Negros Island uh, Health Program, and also Dr. Nati Castro, who was uh, illegally arrested in 2022, but fortunately she was freed after one or two months because of local and international pressure. But um, despite all of the challenges that we face every day, um, knowing that um, we are on our own together with the communities. But when we see for ourselves the inspiration that the community is enduring every day, their hardships are tenfold. But even if they are having a hard time, their inspiration to, you know, to strengthen their organization and uh, rise above that challenges, it inspires us and makes me feel that my worries and concerns are nothing compared to what they are undergoing. And so we health activists uh, derive our strength from the determination of our communities. So as health activists, it is important for us to always be in the midst of the mass movement and not to detach ourselves So, um, because that will keep us going. Zara Alvarez and Dr. Sanselan were both health and human rights activists. Murdered in 2020, they remain big loss for their communities. I think it's really a heavy loss. <laughs> in Negros, when you speak of Negros, an island of mostly uh, farm workers, of very, very poor communities. No? It's a heavy, big loss uh, when, when killings of Sarah and uh, Doc Mary happened. No? Because You lose good people eh, who, would, who would know what it, it is to live in those communities. It's very rare, <laughs> actually. Very rare among civil servants or uh, those in public service like Dr. Mary uh, Sansilan. I mean, she stayed in the Philippines. She's a doctor. She's a medical doctor. She has all um, the possible motivation to go out of the country because there's really pitiful pay for doctors like her to stay in the country. But she opted to, you know, work with several communities. And not many would do that, unfortunately, <laughs> among our health professionals. But they continue to do it. Dr. Mary continued to do it. A big loss and illegitimate killings, which did produce no interest at all by the Filipino authorities. After the incidents of the killings, what we can say is that there is no uh, real independent, thorough investigation that has been conducted. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> and we say this for a fact, because that's what authorities have been saying. They, don't, they didn't even investigate. <laughs> And that is the hardest part, I think, in the killings of Sarah and Dr. Mary. They're, they're supposed to be valued members of society. 
because of the work that they do. Dr. Sanselan is a municipal health officer and she's doing uh, both Dr. Sanselan and um, Sarah uh, were doing life-saving work uh, in their engagement in community health work. But uh, how do they get recognized and their cases looked at. There is not even an ounce of effort for investigations by uh, the Philippine authorities. Our health depends on their safety. That's why Viva Salud launched the Not a Target campaign led by my colleague Victor. With this campaign, we aim to stop the repression of health workers and activists. Healthcare workers, activists, but also health organizations and social movements that advocate for the right to health are an important force for change. They provide care to vulnerable populations and make health policy more equitable. Yet too often, these critical voices are targeted, especially in countries where democratic space is under pressure. That is why we want to show our solidarity towards them. We are currently collecting cases from our partner organizations from the DRC, Palestine and the Philippines, to share on our media platforms and also with external media platforms. We are also organizing Defend the Defenders on December 9 in the streets of Brussels. During this march, together with other social organizations, we highlight the importance of social movements and activists. Next to that, we are collecting as many pictures as possible from people with a message in support of these activists and health workers. In December, we are going to send all the pictures together with the messages of support to the Belgian Minister of Development Cooperation, Kitir. This way, we call for continued protection of the social movement for health worldwide. Of course, international mobilization remains highly important in such struggles. Catherine explains us how actions coming from the world can always amplify voices and put pressure on governments about human rights violations. International uh, voice is uh, very important because um, the Philippine government does trade with other countries and it has diplomatic relations with other countries. So we believe it is important for other countries to also amplify their voices against the repression, human rights violations in the Philippines because um, in that way, the Philippine government will see that many eyes are watching their move. So if we are able to uh, create that kind of atmosphere in the international community, we hope that the Philippine government would be more conscious of its uh, treatment of the Filipino people and uh, and we hope that uh, it will be made accountable if ever it will uh, the new administration will create uh, new forms of violations against uh, the people's rights. This podcast was recorded and produced by Viva Salud. We really hope you enjoyed this first episode and will next share with you the story of health workers and activists in Palestine. Stay tuned on our campaign Not a Target by following Viva Salud on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram to follow the work of our partners who definitely need our strong support to face the repression. <laughs>